In this video, I will show you how to find the extrema of this trig function on a closed interval. Let's find the extrema of f of x equals 2 sine x minus cosine 2x on the closed interval 0 to 2 pi. So we got some trig functions going on. This should be interesting. As always, we're going to start by taking the derivative of the function. So let's see, when you take the derivative and there's a constant, you can sort of leave the constant alone and then take the derivative of whatever comes next. The derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm just going to end up with cosine x uh, and that's it for the first term. Now for the second term, it's a little bit more interesting because I have a tiny function inside of this function. So get emotionally prepared to do the chain rule. But we're going to start with the outer function of cosine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's like I'm going to have negative, negative sine 2x. Uh, and of course, that's going to make positive sign, all right, because of the, du the double negative. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with plus sign. Okay, but understand I'm using the idea that uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sign. But because we have this uh, function inside of here, we need to multiply by the derivative of that. So now I'm doing the derivative of 2x. Uh, but of course, the derivative of 2x is simply 2. So I'm not recopying this entire thing. I was just showing you where it's coming from. That's why I'm multiplying by 2 because of the chain rule. So I'm going to clean this up a tiny, tiny bit. And I will have 2 cosine x uh, plus 2 sine 2x. Now, ultimately, we need to set this equal to zero and solve, but there's something that we're going to have to deal with first, and it has to do with the second term right here, sine 2x. We really need to have just regular x's. Having a 2x here is a problem. Luckily, back in pre-calculus, we learned about our double angle identities. Yay! So pause the screen, copy this down, and put this on the list of things that you need to still have memorized. So the sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine cosine. So we're going to use that identity right now. OK, so this is going to equal uh, 2 sine x cosine x. All right, I just did this identity right here and it became all of this. So real quick, that's going to give me f prime is equal to 2 cosine x plus 4 sine x cosine x. Let's go ahead and set this equal to 0 and solve to find our critical numbers. Notice that I have a 2 and a 4. So both of these are divisible by 2. Uh, so I can divide both sides of the equation by 2, which is really going to just turn this into cosine x plus 2 sine x cosine x equals 0. 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So that's that's nice. Uh, do not divide by a trig function. You might be tempted to divide everything by cosine, get rid of those extra cosines. Instead, what you want to do is GCF. So uh, let's pull out that common cosine that we see outside of parentheses. And that's going to leave 1 plus 2 sine x. So now we can use our zero product property and set both of these equal to zero. So cosine x equals zero and one plus two sine x is equal to zero. All right, 
we subtract 1 from both sides, we have 2 sine x is equal to negative 1. Dividing both sides by 2, we have sine x is equal to negative 1 half. To find the critical numbers, we need to solve both of these equations. Picture the unit circle. Solving cosine x equals 0 is very simple. We know that cosine is the x value on the unit circle, and the x values will be 0 here and here. So that's going to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. All right, so let's get our list of critical numbers going. All right, so, so far we have pi over 2, and we have 3 pi over 2. But what about sine x is equal to negative 1 half? A long time ago, you should have memorized these trig values, including the fact that sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So the fact that we have sine equal to negative one-half, or if you ignore the negative sign, you know that the reference angle is going to be pi over six. Okay, so keep that in your mind. The reference angle is going to be pi over six. So that means uh, this is pi over six. Okay, a little squeeze in a little pi over six. Um, but there are four places on the unit circle that have that reference angle. All right, so maybe I'll, I'll label it here. So this is pi over 6. Uh, on the far left would be 6 pi over 6. So that means this uh, is 5 pi over 6. Uh, and if I go 1 past it, that's going to be 7 pi over 6. If I go all the way around and back to 2 pi, 2 pi is the same thing as uh, 12 pi over 6. That means if I stop one short, I'm at 11 pi over 6. So why am I talking about this? There are um, four places that have a reference angle of pi over 6. The sine of any of these angles will be some kind of 1 half. It's just that two of them are positive one-half, and two of them will give us negative one-half. In which quadrants will the sine function be negative? Remember that the sine function is a y value on the unit circle. So that tells you that these are the two angles that will give us a negative sine value. So the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half, and the sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. If this had been positive 1 half, we would have picked uh, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. All right, well, it's time to make our table of values, but let's scroll back and not forget that the endpoints are 0 and 2 pi. So let's put those at the beginning and end of our chart. And then we have the other critical numbers, um, which are these. So I'm just going to put them in order. So here's the original function, and we need to evaluate this at each one of these uh, endpoints and critical numbers. Let's start with 0. So if we do 2 sine 0 minus cosine of 2 times 0. Well, that's just 0, so let's just go straight to that. What is the sine of 0? Remember the unit circle. All right, 0 radians. We're talking about this spot right here. Sine is the y value on the unit circle. The y value here is 0. So this is going to be 
0. So we have 2 times 0 minus the cosine of 0 radians. The cosine is the x value, and that is 1. So that will be minus 1. So, of course, 0 minus 1 is going to be negative 1. All right, rinse and repeat. Uh, how about pi over 2? So if I do 2 sine pi over 2 minus cosine of 2 times pi over 2, can you see that these 2's are going to cancel out? So I'm going to have 2 sine pi over 2 minus cosine of pi. Well, pi over 2 is up here at the top, and sine is a y value, so that's going to be 1. So this is going to be 2 times 1. Cosine of pi. Pi is over here on the left. The x value is negative 1. All right, so this is going to be 2 plus 1, because minus negative is a positive. So that will be 3. All right, how about 7 pi over 6? So we're going to do 2 times the sine of 7 pi over 6 minus the cosine of, I'm just going to do this off to the side, uh, 2 times 7 pi over 6. The 2 goes into the 6 3 times. So that will be 7 pi over 3. It's going to make that quick conversion. When you look at the sine of 7 pi over 6, you should really be focusing on the reference angle pi over 6. And we know that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half because we memorized that a long time ago. Um, so the only thing we have to watch out for, because so we're going to definitely have 2 times one half, but it might be a negative one half. Seven pi over six uh, is in the third quadrant where y values are negative. So this should be a negative one half. And then we have minus the cosine of seven pi over three. Again, focus on the reference angle of pi over three. We have memorized that the cosine of pi over 3, well, that's also 1 half. Okay, so this is also going to be 1 half. Um, 7 pi over 3, what quadrant is that in? Here I have divided the unit circle up into pi over 3s. And uh, if I come over here to pi, I know that is 3 pi over 3. If I went all the way back around to 2 pi, that would be 6 pi over 3. So I know that 7 pi over 3 would be 1 more. So that's in the first quadrant, so that's actually going to stay positive. So I'm going to end up with, um, well, 2 times a half is 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 minus 1 half. This would be the same as negative 2 over 2 minus 1 half with your like denominators and all. So this would be negative 3 halves. So now we're at 3 pi over 2. So we need to do 2 times the sine of 3 pi over 2 minus the cosine of, well, 2 times 3 pi over 2. Those 2's are going to cancel each other out, so that'll be cosine of 3 pi. Okay, so the sine of 3 pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 2 is right here. The sine is the y value, so that is negative 1. Uh, cosine of 3 pi. So this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi is going to be right here. 
cosine is the x value, which is negative 1. So this will be minus negative 1. So we will have negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So next we need to do 2 times the sine of 11 pi over 6 minus the cosine of 2 times 11 pi over 6. The 2 cancels with the 6 and makes a 3, so that's going to be 11 pi over 3. Uh, the sine of 11 pi over 6, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. 11 pi over 6 is in the fourth quadrant where sine is negative. So this is going to make negative 1 half. Cosine of 11 pi over 3. Focus on the pi over 3, the reference angle. We've memorized that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Uh, 11 pi over 3, what quadrant will that be in? Uh, let's see. Well, this would be 6 pi over 3. Right? If I went all the way around and back, would be 6 pi over 3. Um, if I did that again, that would be 12 pi over 3. So if I stop one short of that, that will be 11 pi over 3. So 11 pi over 3 is in the uh, fourth quadrant where cosine is positive. It's an x value, and x values are positive to the right like this. So this is going to be a positive 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to end up with negative 1 minus 1 half. Um, this is what we had a minute ago. Negative 2 over 2 minus 1 half. This is negative 3 over 2 again. Finally, we have the last critical number, 2 pi. Well, technically, it's not a critical number. It's an endpoint. But it's the last value we need to check. So we'll, we will have 2 times the sine of 2 pi minus the cosine of 2 times 2 pi, which will be 4 pi. All righty then, the sine of 2 pi, uh, 2 pi is right here. Sine is the y value, which is 0. So this will be 2 times 0. 4 pi, well, this is 2 pi. If I went around again, that would be 4 pi. Same position. Cosine is the x value. That's 1. And, of course, 0 minus 1 is negative 1 again. So we see there is a maximum at pi over 2, comma, 3. And there are two minima. That's the plural of minimum. One is at 7 pi over 6, comma, negative 3 over 2. And the other is at 11 pi over 6, comma, negative 3. 3 over 2. Let's take a look at this graphically. So here's what that same information looks like on a graph. Soak it in.